uh, the throughput uh, of near is in a way determined by how many shards uh, it has, right? So uh, previously we have uh, four shards, and um, that was sufficient for quite a long time. And I, I, I think, in fact, until the end of last year, we had a pretty low utilization rate uh, across the board, right? So I think we were like at maybe 20% utilized across uh, all shards uh, until the end of last year. But then uh, near starts to get more traction and more adoption. Uh, there's, uh, you know, a lot of users coming through, through kiting. Uh, and also with the hot launch this year, again, a lot more usage. And what happens is that um, on some of the shards, uh, it become it, it starts to become full. And what that means is that, um, you know, usually w when you send a transaction, you just get processed right away. Uh, but when the shards get full, it get, start to get congested, means that when you send a transaction, it will not get processed right away. You might wait for a period of time before it can get processed. Uh, and uh, that that is really a suboptimal experience for users because you know if you're like you know Telegram user just get onboarded onto Hot without you know knowing like much about blockchain and all like you're like oh I click this button but like it doesn't do anything for like ten minutes what what the heck is going on right um, so yeah so it is important for us to uh, improve the throughput or like capacity of the of the network. Uh, and uh, yeah, so essentially, you can think of by adding more shards, we are improving the throughput of the of the network. Uh, it's not as simple as that, but like you know, uh, conceptually, like you can think of like, well, we we added two more shards, so that's like fifty percent uh, capacity improvement compared to what we had before. It, it is a pretty uh, pretty significant. We had we had anticipated uh, sometime in the last year that um, uh, there may be as maybe in the future there's going to be this uh, uh, this, this uh, increase in, uh, in in utilization and, and we might need to do something about it. So uh, we started working on uh, this project called resharding. Uh, so basically, it's the ability to break one shard uh, or like split one shard into two shards, right? So the idea is like uh, you know. When the network gets more utilized, usually what you will see is that on, on some shard, maybe there's like a popular contract or maybe a set of popular contracts. So some shard might get start to get full. And uh, what you want to do there is generate to break it in, into two shards or like more shards. Right? Then uh, essentially like you, you kind of spread the usage uh, and then um, and, and also like uh, increase the capacity. Right. So let's say you have like two contracts on the same shard that are both uh, Heavily utilized, then because they all live on the same shard, then uh, you know other people, you know, people generally start to suffer because the transaction uh, cannot get processed in time. Uh, so the way to, to to handle that is to let's say split that into two shards with uh, each of the, the contracts on on different shard. Um, so that that's kind of actually what what happened. Uh, we had a Kai Ching contract and one of the Kai Ching contracts and the hot contract the main hot contract on the same shard and that you know that's like uh two of the yeah there's like top two dabs on, uh, across web three in the same shard and <laughs> that was like not not to, <laughs> not sustainable so we actually split that in two shards and that was actually so the restarting project actually took us maybe like a few months to and i mean obviously started before all this uh you know crazy uh, adoption happened uh so we were actually so it's interesting because like uh what what hot was first launching is actually when we were like about to roll out the first resharding, and then it's interesting because back then, uh, when we first started working on the resharding, um, shards three or like the original the old shards three which had a uh, thread coin contracts on it was the one that was more heavily utilized. So that's why we first um uh, in that release we actually split shards three because that's what we tested with and we want to, we want to make sure that we can get everything uh correct. Uh, and th so basically, we first started splitting shards three, uh, which actually by by the time we actually wrote all the releases, already not the most congested shard. Uh, so that's why, like, r uh, basically right afterwards, right right after we see that you know it goes uh, fine. I mean, obviously there are uh, some issues we observed during the release, uh, and then and then like we quickly address them. But basically, right after we see that okay, everything can go, so we can actually do the split of any shard uh, into two shards, then uh, we right away split. 
uh, shard two, uh, you can see the shards as well. No, it's all life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the, you know, design principles we had from day one is that we want the blockchain to uh, keep running like through, uh, throughout all the upgrades we do, right? So we have done a few major upgrades in the past as well, including the uh, the simple nice state upgrade, uh, which changed from one shard to four shards. Um, and that was an easier uh, thing to do because uh, it's like, yeah, it's starting from one. So there are some like, um, things that are easy to handle from the engineering point of view, uh, this resharding is, is much more difficult uh, because we already had four shards. Um, and uh, yeah, so so but, but uh, and anyways, yeah, we, we 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 did not want to shut down the chain, and because that that would mean that you know people would not be able to use uh, whatever app they they want to use uh, during that time period. So that, that I think. Uh, and, and then we really value the, the user experience and, and we really want to make sure that, um, you know, sharding or like, you know, just like upgrades in general, uh, do not affect users. And they, they don't even know that there are now like six shards or like, they don't even know we had four shards. And then, and, and, and I think the truth is people, people didn't know, right? It was just regular users. You don't, you don't like, maybe you don't even want to know, right? Like you're just using your app and have good time. I mean, it's a pretty cool feat. And I think, so I want to take the developer perspective a little bit. And so some developers might know the concept of sharding from databases. So if you're coming from non-blockchain, you that it's not like a brand new term necessarily. Uh, how would you compare this though to like a database sharding setup versus how this is actually set up? Yeah, I think in, in a lot of ways it is similar. Uh, but as you probably know, like sharding in a distributed database is also a difficult thing. Like, <laughs> um, and, and not not many people have have done it right. Um, so and, and in the blockchain world, it's, it's even more difficult because in in a dis distributed database, the, the advantage you have is that you have like centralized control of the entire system. And uh, I mean, this this mostly comes in uh, in two aspects. One is that uh, you. you won't have, you won't need to think about like malicious activity. Yes, you, you need to be like thought tolerant, but it, mostly you're tolerating uh, nodes that are like uh, machines that are like offline because like they uh, so something happened with your like battery or whatever, or uh, like disk is like gone or something. But but then like no no machine is like going to maliciously attack others. Other, like no shard is going to be maliciously attacking other shards. Uh, and you don't need to think about what what will happen when that happens. Uh, and, and then actually that, that is why like sharding blockchain is a lot more difficult is because of this, um, uh, you know, game theory, like this, in the security aspect of like what, what you need to do to, to get, uh, to, to design, uh, things that will work well, uh, against those cases. And also like the game theoretical incentives that you need to design to, to make it work. Uh, and I think the, the second aspect is more, I would say like, uh, engineering related. Right, so in, because you have this centralized control of the entire system, it is actually you can like know what's happening on every single machine. Like you can this like design like centralized logging gesture system to analyze what's happening on every single machine when you need to debug something, and you do have that full view of the entire system. Um, but actually in blockchains you don't have that luxury, and uh, it that, that makes like certain things like debugging very difficult. Uh, for example, if, if like something happens on mainnet, you want to understand what's going on. It's, you only have like partial view. Like you only have the view from like the the nodes you run, like the RPC nodes you run, uh, and to, to kind of try to analyze, trying to like extrapolate what's happening. So that also makes things very difficult. One thing that I know in previous uh, implementations for other chains, you have to be shard aware, um, but you do not at near. Yes. Um, how does that? You know, what's a simple way to put that for a developer? Yeah, so the, that, yeah, I think that, that again is like one of the design principles we had in mind, which is that uh, it should be as user friendly, as developer friendly as possible. So when you deploy a contract, you just deploy it to some account. You don't like, you don't really care which uh, shard that the account lives on. Uh, and and this is um, because we had this uh, grand vision in mind that, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in the future, we will be able to dynamically uh, size the number of shards to cater to the demand, right? So let's say uh, you you are, like some shard is congested, the the, the system would uh, uh, be intelligent enough to know that, okay, this is now congested, so I need to split into two shards and then it would auto automatically happen. 
uh, and then let's say two shards are both un underutilized, then I can merge them back into one. Right? So then, then in this way, like as you as like developer, you don't really need to care about which shard uh, you deploy your contract on because then you know that there's a sound that I can guarantee that yes, it, 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 there could be congestion, but then uh, the the system will be able to react to it, and then you you won't you you won't need to worry about it yourself. In in the future, as we start to add more shards, is it always going to be a resharding process, or is there a way that you can just add a new shard to it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, right? Because that, that's because the how the address space is divided. Basically, like you know, essentially, you can think of this: uh, all the all the possible accounts out there, they're divided into shards, and it has to be a complete division because otherwise, because like pretty much like and, and like we need to make sure like when when the account is created, people like the system know. Uh, which shard it is on, right? That, that, that can, that, that cannot be gaps, right? That cannot be like, uh, uh, uh like uh, some account is uh falling through the cracks, right? That that's not acceptable. Uh, so yeah, pretty much like, uh, it, it just like you kind of think of as like today's divide this way, then we need to add more more shards. We do kind of change how it's divided, but still they have to divide the entire um address space of all accounts. Uh, so yeah, basically it will all be uh some kind of resharding. Uh, but uh, we 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 are going to make it easy. Uh, we're going to make it easier to do resharding, and uh, hopefully the overhead of doing that will become uh, lower and lower over time, and it will become a more like regular occurrence. That's yeah, that, that, yeah. I mean, it makes total sense. So, just kind of my own curiosity. So then, when a new contract is deployed. How is that determined of where that goes? Is it just totally randomized, uh, or is there actually a mechanism that's actually uh, distributing those? No, it's not uh, totally r randomized. Uh, so basically, there today the 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 boundaries are like hard coded. This, this is because we don't have dynamic resharding uh, enabled. So essentially, today every time we need to do a resharding, we we do need to compute the uh, new boundaries ourselves, and then we we do like a code change to. Say well, this is now the new boundaries, and uh, uh, yeah, then then we do this release, and then that would actually take take effect. That would you know trigger resharding, and and then the new boundaries would take effect. Uh, but then we imagine that in the future, uh, it won't be this way. The the system would dynamically calculate uh, where the boundaries are, and then the resharding gets triggered automatically. So we have like homogeneous sharding, right? So I think sharding is not a loaded term. Like there's different interpretation of it. Uh, but what we're doing is that uh, all the shards are homogeneous. They have the same runtime, uh, same like you know account account structure and, and and all of that. And so basically, this allows us to to achieve this scalability uh, while preserving this uh, composability and and the the same user experience, right? So so from like user pr perspective, you you don't really need to care about which shard your account is on, which shard the app that you interact with is on. Whereas like if you if you're in a server, that's not the case, right? You do need to care about which L2 you're using. So, with the way the protocol is designed, and you know, both where it is today and your future plans, can you just briefly talk about um, why this is the like unique opportunity for the concept of chain abstraction and chain signatures that maybe other chains couldn't do? Yeah. So, I think uh, one thing that uh, um, a, a lot of people don't don't realize about uh, the uh, the chain, I mean, obviously, the, the chain abstraction, chain signature is to uh, unify the experience across Web3, make things uh, chain agnostic, and, and users just use uh, multiple different chains at the same time and so on. Um, but, but like, <laughs> in order to, to achieve that, uh, you need a very scalable uh, infrastructure that underpins that entire experience, right? Uh, imagine, like, you have, you know, uh, 10 million users using it, like you know in, in one day and then you, you need to have this uh highly scalable infrastructure and 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 in our vision that essentially like near becomes this um the, this whole this is like entry point and the the thing that upstreet all of their experience across web3 that that means like all the transaction would, would originate from near right? that means you need to have this extremely scalable uh blockchain that that uh, that actually serve user uh this great experience you get uh from uh, chain signature and, and, and chain abstraction and then allow them to to aggregate across all the chains. Um, and it's not all, and also it's not only just scalable; it has to be uh, very uh, flexible and, and allows uh, you like allows users to have this uh, granular control of like different uh, accounts they have on different chains through some kind of smart contract on here and the ability to kind of uh, you know this. Uh, 
highly customizable control that you can implement in a smart contract, uh, and all of that is, um, it's as in critical for uh, having that unified experience uh, across Web3. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great answer. No, I really appreciate that.